This means Caps can get that Oriana here. They're going to prioritize it here for first pick. But there's a lot open and available right now. Of course, the Rakan, the Alistair, both the Zaya, the Kaisa. So on red side here, yeah, you gave the Oriana, but you get two picks that you could prioritize now as Weibo Gaming. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was taking a look actually at Han Sama Solo queue as well, so I'm kind of glad that we saw these two bands just to see what else he might play. A lot of Draven, a lot of Kalista, obviously, but even some Nila, some Kaisa thrown in there, also the Senna once. So let's see what he eventually does end up with. But uh, for now, as you mentioned, on the side of Weibo Gaming, looking for what they will go for. The Orianna, generally, you know, a control mage doesn't have a lot of escapability, so maybe trying to shut it down with some hard engage here. The Vi and the Kaisa is being hovered right now. Yeah, looking to like lock the Kaisa over the Zaya, over the Rakan here for light, and it will get locked in. Is your hover might be a little bit indicative of what we might see in that third slot, but you definitely don't need to get it on R1, R2, just simply because they've already locked in the mid. They can't deny you that pick. You can get some additional information first. Let's see how the response is going to be here now for the side of G2. Yike yeah, gonna hover Caps' his favorite, Anivia. He's already got the Oriana locked in. They'll match the Kaisa with the Zaya here. And because Rakan is still open and available, you have given both now to the bot duo here of G2. And I expect they'll take it. Yeah. You know, I, I was hoping that maybe Ansamo would play something uh, a little bit off the wall, but it might just be the Zaya Rakan to come through. Now, they haven't picked a Rakan just yet. Definitely a consideration here alongside of that Zaya. So let's see what Mickey X does want to pick up here, or if they go elsewhere towards a jungle pick or something like that. But nope, it's just going to be straight standard here from the side of G2. You get that first pick, Oriana, followed up with Zaya Rakan. Now, you will lose the Alistair here as Weibo if you decide to lock in Xiaohu's Azir, but the expectation is that that pick is just so high prior right now, so valuable. And Xiao is a fantastic Azir player, so he is going to look to lock it in. His most played here in the LPL. And, I mean, you, you know you're going to lose the Alistair, but there's still some viable supports left over here you can play in this composition. Let's see if G2 are going to put that focus on Crisp here in the second part of the draft, or if they want to give Broken Blade here a little bit more power, try to focus away the Shy. But banning against the Shy with his Eclectic Champion pool, pretty tough to pull off. Yeah, I mean, I'd say for both of these top laners, it's going to be pretty interesting to see exactly where they do go with some of these bands. Uh, waiting on the first one here from Weibo. Will they target that top laner or maybe take away from that already a little bit shortened jungle pool? But no, it's just going to be the Renekton, uh, a stock standard one there for Broken Blade. They're going to take that one off the board already. Yeah, that's going to get locked away here from Broken Blade first. And now let's see if they're going to pinch Crisp a little bit. Obviously, the Alistair, the Nautilus, those are the two big picks you're looking at with this composition. Follow up for the Vi or set up for the Vi and then the Emperor's Divide from Xiaohu. Very simple here to, to keep the focus on some of those picks that are going to be high value no matter what in terms of how this comp can front to back or look for pick with the Vi. See if they want to go for another lock away here. It's going to be that Lee Sin. With the Oriana, this could be a very deadly duo in the mid lane here. It's one that the Ike is very, very well versed on. So I think this is a great ban. Let's see if that Alistair is going to get now taken away here from Weibo. There's a lot of follow up. You can use the Alistair to set up the Vi. Then the follow up comes through from the light on that Kaisa. Azir can shuffle in. This seems like a no brainer to take that top tier support pick away. Well, it is going to be the Jax that does get taken off the board here. So maybe with that Renekton gone, you know, trying to give themselves a better chance and not just leave the Jax to go over. As now thrown back over to Weibo Gaming here. Let's see if they do go with another pick for that top side or if they want to wait for counter pick as the Cassante has been kind of that blind pick that everybody is going for, especially with Jax off the board. They're um, going to pick that one up. Mickey, you know, you never know uh, what you're going to see here in terms of his, his champion pool. But he's already locked in the Rakan. I got scared there for a second. And uh, with these hovers, don't, don't talk about the hovers, Wolf. Don't talk about the hovers. <laughs> not entirely sure what Hansama is trying to say with these, but see what we're going to see for Broken Blade here. Obviously, has the counter pick. <gasps> the and Yone! Yone! The Yone Rel, the Rel left up and the Yone comes out here for Broken Blade. This one already just got a lot more interesting. I mean, this is just screaming combos in team fights. We often call these types of compositions circle compositions. If you put the Rel ultimate down, the Orion ultimate follow-up, you've got Rakan, you've got Yone ult and the feathers as well. 
And rather than going for the Alistair pick here, it looks like Crisp is going to go back to an old favorite here, the Leona, in order to look for more single target damage. This is going to be a battle of G2 has a composition that can combo you in any fight. It's extremely simple. If you've got set up on an objective, it's extremely difficult for Weibo to enter. But G2 relies on their composition working together. It has to be a five-man unit to win 5v5 team fights. Whereas on the other side, Weibo have great disengage with this Alistair. They have a little bit of peel with the Leona, and their single target blow up is actually insane. So it's gonna be difficult for Caps to side lane the late game, for example. They need to be aware of Weibo Gaming snowballing this out of control. Uh, the Azir here for Shahu definitely going to be something to look towards as we've had uh, a bunch of our mid lanes here already, not to mention uh, a one scout who has already uh, shown that, hey, Azir is pretty good, and Shahu's going to come in and say, I'm pretty good at this as well. But yeah, Oriana versus Azir there in the mid lane. Nothing changes. The more things change, the more things stay the same as we do get this one in this matchup. G2 versus Weibo Gaming, though, pretty interesting one for this head to head. In this best of one Swiss stage definitely feels like a, a fresh new look. Shy back to 2018. We talked about some of that history for the Shy at Worlds, his history with G2. And this matchup is, is one that we're so lucky to have this early on in the Swiss stage. I think a matchup that people were absolutely looking forward to here. And Weibo Gaming, this is going to be a bloody game one way or the other because it's all combos, all fighting for G2 when it comes to late game objectives. For Weibo, they have to try to look for those single targets. It's going to be a good one, Valdez. Oh, it's going to be a banger. You just know from the second you saw this matchup. So let's jump onto the rift for this game. The sixth one of the day, G2 up against Weibo Gaming to see which next team is going to end up 2-0 and zero on the day. That's right, these teams did both win their initial matchups. Cadro Cullen, Kellen out, but G2 did take a pretty dominant uh, win at the end of the day there in that one against D plus Kio. And I mean, both of these teams looking to go 2-0, meaning they will only need one additional win to move out of the Swiss stage. Quite significant what it means to take that 2-0 like we saw from Gen G just moments before. Yeah, it definitely feels good to get into the top of the bracket, try to get out with a best of three and just be in good position for the future. As we do take a look at some of the runes, we do have Hail of Blades there for the Azir in mid lane here for Xiaohu. Might be looking to take some quick trades early on. We'll see how much that affects this early game, especially against the Soriana that has been kind of uh, taking some big wins in the solo 1v1 matchup so far. Yeah, Broken Blade gonna come over here and look to oh. <laughs> disrupt <laughs> Weiwei here on his red buff start. Yeah. Slow him down substantially, but won't be able to get much from it. We'll of course drop a ward, get some additional information. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good idea, uh, just in general. I mean, Weiwei has been such a immense force in these early games, and just trying to get a, a read on exactly where he's starting is going to be good. Now, we'll have to wait and see how much this affects this top lane as Broken Blade is already getting bullied a bit here by the Shy on this Cassante, which has been a big success pick so far here at Worlds. But Broken Blade pulling out the top Yone. This is something we don't see too often. No, certainly not. Punished a little bit here by the Shy because obviously Weiwei transfers that information over. Uh-oh. Level one here on the bottom side for Ansama. They're just going to have to back away. Big trade for the side of Weibo Gaming's bottom lane. Just, uh, he's got a biscuit. He'll be okay. But, be okay. Uh, got to respect that level two. Yeah. And I was just going to mention, you know, on the top side, the Shy looking to punish uh, Broken Blade, harassing Weiwei there a little bit. Gets a nice push, gets level two first, and we'll see how this matchup shakes out. But down here on the oh bottom boy. side, this could be a problem. He's going to be spotted. Mickey X going in pretty early on. Does get the flash and the ghost out of light. So still a big win here for G2 on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, not much Weiwei can do about this right now either. He's going to come over here, see Yike on this blue buff. And we're going to have a little bit of a smite fight. Uh, just a little bit of a head-to-head. -head. We have it in the mid lane as well, as that one is going to go over to Weiwei. And now we have a turn from the bottom lane here from Weibo Gaming. Gets the flash out of Yike. And Mickey X is going to walk this one out as well. 
Okay, a lot of action here, no kills, but it is very much the, the bloody game we expected. Now, nobody dies here, but constant pressure everywhere. I mean, starting with Broken Blade, now he's proxying the minion wave here away from the Shy. He harassed Weiwei, then we see a fight over the blue buff, some rotations over from Weibo's bottom lane. Nobody dies, but a lot of pressure exchanged here. But Weiwei is going to come out on top here in terms of the farm with how many resources Yike committed there. Yeah, coming in here, level three, that's generally the sweet spot for Jungle Rel. And now with the Hex Flash, trying to get it going on to Xiao, who will just be able to shuffle away. It's just barely out of range was Yike. Now you mentioned the trade that Caps was looking for earlier. He has the Airy versus the uh, Hail of Blade. Xiao, who ends up getting a lot more damage done in that scuffle earlier, is trying to relieve that pressure as Weiwei, meanwhile, going to continue to further his farm lead right now. He's going to take these Raptors away with some of that mid-prio. Mid-prio is so important here in the Swiss stage so far. You can get so many incremental advantages from this, and Yike, unaware, will be scouted out here by Mickey. <laughs> well, too late. Yeah, Mickey's, you know, he's just going to say hello. Doesn't really amount to Caps. too much else. Yeah, Caps just take a big chunk from Xiaohu, but he will be okay. Still holding on to the teleport. Probably just going to clear this one back away and get back into lane. Mickey already out on the map. This has been uh, very critical for many different regions. We see this a lot in the LCK as well. Just big time roaming, roaming supports, level three, level four. And already Mickey is trying to make his presence known here on the map. Uh, hasn't come up with anything too big just yet, but get some additional information. See, of course, returning to lane now is Xiao who's going to crash this wave and Caps has not backed just yet. Has a Doran's Ring, so can hold on to a little bit more mana here, clear that additional wave as best as he can, and he and Yike can have those backs synced up. Top side here, level six, very close. You see they're uh, getting closer to the hitting that one right now. Broken Blade has an advantage here, way, way on the top side of the map with that back for Yike. See if any action happens there. It looks like it is. Yeah, a bit of action. You know, Yone putting his face into the enemy as he generally does. Broken Blade, I, I think if you're going to pick this pick, generally you, you want to be doing stuff with it. You don't want it to sit back and farm. So like to see how proactive he is being in that top lane as we're taking a look at the XP and level. Caps the first one to hit level six. Broken Blade following up right behind him. Yeah, Shahu will be hitting his as well right now as he returns to lane. Level six here, tough to hit against the Shy, but wants to potentially pull Weiwei out of the jungle, get some additional information about where that Vi is. As, you know, the level six timing for Yone into a Cassante is not an all-in timing, but level six very strong at looking for a pick, looking for objective, even a roam here, potentially. As he is going to hide that he's here, coming down now, Shahu has shuffled, though. Yeah, absolutely. We want to take a moment to present our featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz in the top lane. Broken Blade versus The Shy. Obviously, two big names in the scene for quite a while now and just getting even spicier, I think, with some of the picks. You know, maybe not the Cassante, but very curious to see uh, The Shy back on this one and Broken Blade to see if he can challenge him in this featured matchup on the top side with the Yone. A lot of posturing around this dragon right now. Xiaohu has level six, of course, Caps does as well. It's all about positioning here. Those two very impactful mid ultimates here on the first Drake fight. G2 gonna start this one up. Crisp very well aware of this, and it is just a tug of war battle right now in terms of trying to grab that control. Light very far away though. It's going to be interesting to see if Weibo can actually collapse onto this one. Light eventually does make his way in. This is a very slow dragon that is going down right now. And already uh, they're going to get that poke on Han Salma. And immediately T2 just going to back away. It is one singular Cloud Drake, but that is the first objective going into the hands of Weibo Gaming. And Xiaohu is able to just kind of keep Caps at bay there, and the threat of this Azir shuffle is so great that G2 can't get the positioning they're looking for. It's up here, a bit of a trade once again. The Shy eats a bunch of damage. Broken Blade still holding onto that ultimate. Yeah, he's looking for it, I think. He got Caps coming Caps. up to the top side as well and immediately going back to the mid lane. <laughs> so not going to amount to too much, but you can see that G2, those solo laners were considering a play onto the top side, but you know, diving a Cassante can be risky business, especially if you don't know where Rayway is, so they're just gonna let it go. Yeah. Rift Herald spawning here in 15 seconds, trying to force out the jungler, trying to get some resources there. We knew this top matchup was going to be fire. We, and we're always on the edge of our seat every time it goes up there. And you see Broken Blade taking one of these aggressive trades. I mean, the Shy is still sitting at half health here. As coming up is Weiwei. Yone obviously has his ultimate and flash for escape. Let's see how well he can react here. If Weiwei does commit, he's got flash, he's in range. 
Now let's see how this one goes. Yike just getting to work on this Rift Herald, and Weiwei says, well, Lane's pushing in a Broken Blade. Broken Blade playing this one very respectfully. He lets the wave push into him. I say that, and now he's stepping up straight into the Vi. The combo comes in. Can they take him out? Yes, they can. No flash, no hope for Broken Blade as the Shy and Weiwei put it together. And now with the all out, the Shy is looking for a little bit more. Now Caps coming on in here, looking to get punished by Weiwei as a huge Wobble combo does come out from G2, though. They turn it around, but Xiaohu says no. He will turn it back, but he doesn't get too much damage at G2. Two will end up with the win in this fight. Ah, uh, Weibo, eyes bigger than their stomach there. You've got the win. You've got that pick on the Broken Blade. Set up for a reset there and a control around the Herald. They commit too far there and ultimately end up getting turned on. Caps with a very fantastic ultimate there as the engage comes through. And Xiaohu can engage from so far away. He's got Shuffle, he's got Flash, right? And he's got his ultimate, but they don't have enough damage in this early game, and it backfires in a big way. As the dust settles, G2, a thousand gold ahead. Yeah, definitely a big win for G2 now. Yikes, still in the river as Xiaohu flashless could look for something on the top side, but it doesn't look like they want that. G2, they're gonna be the ones that settle it down. They're gonna be the ones that get that early lead and they say, hey, there's a free Rift Herald right here. We can just take it. As you were saying, Wolf, maybe Weibo could have looked that direction as well, but instead G2 going to end up in the lead with a couple of nice plays. Yeah, just a little bit of greed there will backfire. The initial play around that control ward was so smart as the Shy drops a ward and sees the bad news. They, of course, uh, do not have control of the Scuttle, so that's the only idea he is going to have to confirm that is being taken. We'll see it before his very eyes, and we'll just return to lane. So objective goes over to G2 on top of the now 1,200 gold lead they have, sitting very pretty in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see if they can continue with uh, this pressure. Just a 1,000 gold lead, but with the Rift Herald in their hands, might look to extend it even further. It's bottom lane going very well for G2. We haven't seen too much action down here, but still 22 CS in the lead is Hansama right now. And on that Zaya, you know he's going to be looking to scale up just a bit. How did you feel about this one, EU representative Vettius, who yeah. suddenly appears? Wait, I don't know if my... where did you come from? I don't know if my mic is on yet. Can you hear me? I can, I can hear, hear you. you. Excellent. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so let's break this replay down because, oh, what an immaculate play here from Caps. We saw Broken Blade getting attacked by two members of Weibo. Really great gank setup on the top side. Xiaohu with what looked like a great flank, but I think it overforced Weiwei, giving G2 the opportunity to turn things around. Now they find themselves with a pretty healthy gold lead, and the moment that G2 were in a gold lead, I saw this as an opportunity to get involved in the cast. So welcome, gentlemen. It's a pleasure to cast with you both. Yeah, I'm really excited to have you up here. You're <laughs> you know, our G2 person, and every time G2 starts to win in a matchup that people are a little bit nervous yeah. about, you appear, and here we go, another fight. Vidius just appears right at the right time. G2 are winning, Vidius is here, and now G2 is here in the bottom side. Crisp is just gone as G2 dive and pick up the easy pickings underneath this turret. Wave of gaming trying to get something up on the top side with some pressure, but G2, another big proactive play. G2 just continuing to put the pressure on here. One small tempo advantage, and they're starting to take more and more off of the map, grabbing plates here, bottom side, grabbing Crisp. And that gold lead is exploding now, still 1,500. But look at the CS difference here between Hansama and Light. This Zaya about to come online. Yeah, I mean, G2 doing a great job so far of finding these small advantages. Of course, it's not ballooned anything into anything too extreme, but the Dragon spawning in 10 seconds, a lot of resets coming through from them, meaning that the next objective that they're likely looking to contest is this Dragon. But you can already see Weibo back on the map, ready to set up that vision, Jiaohu with the push in mids. Caps does, of course, have the teleport. One CS off that level 10, but Weibo in a much better position for the time being. And the Kraken Slayer is picked up here for Hansama, so he was able to, with that additional gold, he picked up bottom side. Shy is looking for something here, or at least the Shy is looking to punish, perhaps. Who's going to win out in this one? Broken Blade has to go back. And meanwhile, that dragon you guys were talking about is going into the hands of Weibo Gaming down on the bottom side. The Shy does have teleport, of course, if they want to hard commit to this fight. He can just back and teleport, but it's going to come at the cost of some plate gold here. Let's pick up some items. This is going to come up here to the top side to defend plates, but this is going to cost them a lot of control on the bottom side of the map. I mean, right now, it's looking pretty good for G2 with no major objectives on the map to play for. You're starting to look for these outer towers. You can see G2 with Yike mainly focusing his attention towards the bot side of the map, wanting to try and secure this outer objective so that they can actually unlock that bot lane and maybe even move them top, move them mid. If 
an opportunity arises to get more plates. Those will be falling off within the next minute. Caps with his TP in mid, maybe uses that pressure to then rotate down towards the bot side. They've kind of abandoned top at this point, but they know that Broken Blade is just going to continue to pick up farm and be this kind of split push threat later on. Domestically, we often saw him go for the uh, hull breaker and be this sp uh, split pushing identity. Ooh, Ansama caught out a bit here. He's stunned nearly 100 to 0. Finally goes into the Featherstorm. He's still alive and he goes to the push. Life finally takes him out. That was getting pretty close to him getting away, but Weibo will be able to punish in the end. Not able to respond on time. It's a double kill into the hands of Light. Caps will pick up 175 gold here on the plates that are falling off. You just mentioned, Vettius, but this does take a lot of the wind out of the sails here of G2. And you can understand the play here. Hansama, he is Zaya. He has Flash. He has Ultimate. He's got neither now, and it is in the death chamber because he overextends into this very aggressive Crisp. Really nice ult from Crisp. Caught Hansama completely unaware. He doesn't have the cleanse available. He should have just ulted that out of respect. But uh, with Weiwei in the area, the fact that he was able to survive this long is very surprising. Mickey with a really good three-man charm, but it's not quite enough. The flash commit from Weibo, they find themselves two kills. Yeah, Mickey here just kind of an additional casualty as well. Double goes over to the Kai'Sa. That lethality build has so much damage, and it's going to get even worse here. The game is evened up now quite substantially. Second Rift Herald spawns at 70, and Weibo are looking to take out this top side turret. You can see the Shy, currently the biggest lead they hold, and the MasterCard lane economy snapshot. Yeah, pretty interesting to see that even after that duo kill down on the bottom side, G2's bottom lane have just gotten too many advantages earlier on, besides, you know, going down eventually to light, that uh, they're just ahead. They take down that full turret down there, and they're going to be feeling pretty good about their chances moving into the mid-game. I mean, it's important to remember that that gold lead is a little deceptive, given that 700 of it is sitting on Mickey. Um, but still, as you rightly said, G2 find themselves with a small gold lead for now. As we enter the mid-game, we're looking at this next Rift Herald spawning. This is going to be really important for breaking open this mid-tier one. Both Orianna and Azir are very difficult champions to siege against. And when you kind of look at the AD carries, they don't have the longest range. They have to get quite up close and personal to take those towers down. So Herald is going to be really important to unlock the mid lane and then unlock the enemy jungle to really start being more practical on the map. And in order to win this Rift Herald fight, I think G2 need to group here quickly as fast as they can to set up for those combos we were talking about in the draft. You've got an Orianna, you have a Yone, you obviously have the Rel, and if you can control the choke points, it becomes very difficult for Weibo to actually fight through. They've got decent range, but only if they can actually get through a choke point and, and use it, as right now Vision going in favor of G2 here as well with that control ward. This Rift Herald fight is going to be so difficult for Weibo to break through since they don't currently have Pryo there. A bit of vision here in the pit for now. Yike gonna get this one started, but immediately Crisp and the Shy looking to collapse. Yike in a little bit of trouble. He has to flash the ult even with the teleport behind him. So immediately just evacuating out of there as fast as he possibly could. Really nice play from Weibo. Their collapse was so fast. A good TP from Jahu to cut off the escape route from Yike forcing his flash. But G2, they still want to contest this. Caps is on his way but I don't think they're really in a great position to do so. They have to walk through so much vision. The map is very dark, but Yike and Mickey will lead the way. They want this Herald so badly. It looks like they're gonna try to commit anyways. Caps in position for an ult, but he's not gonna commit. The Cassante, yeah. So they're just gonna take this mid tier one instead in the trade of this one. So, well, I say that immediately, Weibo able to rotate on over and now they Barely find Caps, he's gonna get combo now. Shy in a little bit of trouble here as the Oni's on top of him and he's just trying to get to safety here, but there's just too many G2 members that are able to hound him down in the bottom river. And the Shy does go down here, fairly tanky, but not tanky enough to look for that much aggression. Great flash there from Caps, reacts quickly, but the bigger story here is that the Herald does go over to Weibo Gaming. They couldn't crack that mid turret in trade, which is essentially, as you were mentioning, Vettius, what they wanted to do with the Herald in the first place. So yes, a Small casualty here for the Shy, but I loved how Weibo Gaming wrapped around the backside, completely avoided going to the choke point where G2 was set up, and now the ball is in their court. This felt very much like a classic the Shy play. You kind of look at the map and Weiwei is saying, hey, can we look for something here? He started walking away. Xiao Hu is literally going top, and the Shy is like, I'm, I'm making a play, guys. The rest of Weibo weren't really on the same page. They couldn't really offer much assistance, and he ends up giving his life. Yeah, the, uh, the Cassante power can be 
quite uh, aggressive sometimes as now he's basically doing it again. He's in the front, but he's just going to go down for free as Weibo, they're trying to get this dragon. Will they even do so? Yes, they will. The spike comes in, but G2, they're looking for more Mickey on the engage. He does find Crisp, and that will be two kills into the hands of G2 in trade for the dragon. You want to put a positive spin on it? The Shy dies in mid. They save the turret. The Shy dies around Drake. They are able to secure the Drake, which is sole point here for Mountain, which is going to be incredibly powerful for this Cassante and how tanky is going to be later on. As meanwhile, oh boy, well Shahu, he's been caught out. He's been found out, and it looks like eventually he will just go down to the turrets, try to give this kill over to the Rakan, and let's see if he can. Yes, he will. No assist even there for Caps. So Mickey with a nice little solo kill. Yeah, that gold advance is just ballooning for Mickey right now. <laughs> the support gap is astronomical, but. Uh, Hansama looking to finally take this tower down. Nice flash. Oh, yeah, he's going to get flashed on and finally goes for the late ult once again. And this time it looks like he might just get out, but oh, no, nice. the residual damage comes in from the AoE from the Vi attack. And that's going to be the Rift Herald now immediately planted down for the side of Weibo Gaming, although they're not going to support this push. Love that play from uh, Weiwei using Mickey as a means to get the execution onto Hansama. Mickey, he could have potentially given the heal to Hans, but he wanted to make sure that there was enough space between him and the jungler. But let's have a look at some, uh, some, some could say fraudulent behavior from the Shy. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is an argument uh, that you could make that this actually ends up keeping G2 at bay long enough for this dragon to go down. And I, I think ultimately that's the plan here. He doesn't want to die, of course, but he's just tanky enough to where he could buy time. Of course, they will lose Crisp on the backside of this as well. That gold lead is mounting, but at least they have that objective advantage. And you can see how desperate G2 are to get this mid turret because they don't have a lot of range. Finally, they have a wave here, but they're just not quite able to do it. I mean, I will say, that's the second time now we've seen Hansama not really respecting his opponents there. We saw it in the bot lane getting ulted by Crisp. We see it again here with a great initiation from Weiwei. The gold is dead even. G2 do have the gold lead, but three dragons in the back pocket of Weibo mean that I feel like in terms of map state, they're in a very confident position because now the Baron becomes a difficult thing to play around. Oh, you want to contest this for the third dra um, Dragon, well, maybe we just give it up in favor of securing a Baron for ourselves. And Shaohu having teleport is really important here coming into these upcoming objective fights because as we've seen before, Weibo do love to flank using their teleports to get around G2's choke point control when they do have that prio, when they do have that vision set up here. You can see right now Weibo having a ton of control over the Baron pit itself. Two and a half minutes to go on that next Dragon. Shaohu, he's still sitting on one item, doesn't have that Nasher's Tooth just yet, so they don't have the damage to rush this down. And they're going to look elsewhere on the map as G2 come over here just to secure a little bit more vision. Yeah, this is uh, kind of uh, exactly what we expected coming into this matchup. G2 and Weibo Gaming to be very evenly matched up. And it's been a bit back and forth, but as you said, Betty is the gold pretty much even here under 1,000 the difference. So any it could be anybody's game. We'll have to wait and see if Weibo can utilize those drakes and that pressure on the map to actually move on to a lead here as we move into the later stages of the game. Yeah, I think when we look at later stages of the game, these mid laners are going to be the most important part, right? Azir versus Orianna, their impact can't be underestimated. The Baron oh. is being started by G2. Missed. They know. Yeah, and this blue ward is going to come down as well. So G2 know that they are spotted in some sense, even if it's a bit late. They're still going to go oh, for this, though. They don't have the flip this. Please don't flip they this. They have the rel. We'll see if they still want to flip it with this extra damage. As the Vi threatening there, the ult comes out and Hansama is going to respect this one. Yike is getting pretty low in the pit though. G2 find themselves uh, against the wall here as Weiwei is trying to threaten onto the Yoda and the first damage is there. They take out Broken Blade and that might just be enough as Yike is left alone in the pit and it's a disaster for G2. Weibo Gaming totally cleaned them up in the Baron pit and that is going to be a huge lead for them now. Oh, the throws in the pit. The throws in the pit, that is. Uh, those two ultimates, Caps and Broken Blade, they're sitting on them. Caps uses it at the end. He is, of course, going to escape. It looks very likely to escape here. Yeah, he's going to get out. But, I mean, those ultimates are what you need to turn. And that's the idea with this composition. You feel confident you can start the Baron. You have that much control. You're looking to turn. But unfortunately, Weibo wrap around faster here, and they just do not pull the trigger. Just keep your eyes on Weiwei here. He's in the pit. And uh, Broken Blade and Yike think that they can either force him out or get a pick, but it's Light that's going to team up with Weiwei to actually dive onto the back line, and then Crisp is quick to follow. Meanwhile, you see Han Summer taken out of the fight by the Shy, creating a two versus one situation, completely spinning up G2. I think their goal was to just get the TP out of the Shy, but 
It spent so long before he spent it. It was an easy play from Weibo, and now they find themselves with a convincing lead. Yeah, uh, and now Weibo Gaming looking for that Mountain Soul. We talked about those objecti uh, those Dragon objectives so important, you know, despite the gold deficit that Weibo had earlier on in the game. I mean, this is really going to be the most important fight right now because this is a Cassante with Mountain Soul. You cannot give that up. Yeah, and already on this Red Bull Baron power play, about 4,000 gold already into the hands of Weibo Gaming. And now look at G2, they're all in the river. They want to challenge this one. Hansama has the cleanse this time around, but now he is down that for the ensuing team fight. Let's see if Weibo Gaming look for the turn or if they just want to get this Mountain Soul. G2 making their way into the pit. They go for the engage, it totally whiffs. And now Yike is alone, as in the front here, Crisp is taking a huge amount of damage. Caps gets isolated on the bottom side and he's gonna go down. The assassination potential of this Weibo Gaming composition. They're looking for more. They want Hansama. The feathers do nothing, and Weibo Gaming are totally going to wipe them up in the bottom river. They will take the Mountain Soul, and now they are sitting on the throne of this game. It's over. It's done. Weibo just dismantled G2. They feel forced into this fight because of the soul, and G2, it was around the Baron again, but unlike D+, there is no window, there is no opportunity, and Crisp just makes it impossible for Hans to play. The engage from Yike does not come the way that they want it to. G2 again find themselves so spread apart, and while they do get that pick onto Crisp, Weibo just tear G2 apart. I mean, it's a divide and conquer, and even though, even if the Rel ultimate hits, Caps is not close enough to really follow up. Hansama disconnected here after the fight is over. There's nothing he can do. And Leona is going to buy so much time, of course, even if you kill her, the fight is lost in the interim. And like I was saying in the draft, it comes to be the case again. Oh it's that win probability powered by AWS. <laughs> it's not looking so great for G2 now. You have to fight together. You have to all be on the same page, but you can't just give up a dragon. They didn't have Pryo. It was always going to be forced. Yeah, definitely a rough position for them. And Weibo Gaming, they, they were born in this kind of scrappy style of gameplay, and they are just going to thrive in it here at the end of this game. So this is going to get pretty interesting. I mean, Broken Blade, he's down here on the bottom side trying to get something done. We even have objective bounties in this game, something you don't often see. But uh, it is that one-sided so far after the huge turnaround from Weibo Gaming in the last couple of fights. I mean, there's so many things to factor in. When we looked at how the early game played out, it was G2's bot side of the map that was getting these huge advantages, but Han summoned multiple times. We saw him getting caught out, and in every single fight, Crisp was forcing his summoner spells out, forcing the ultimate out with just really well-placed ultimates or CC. Meanwhile, Broken Blade was supposed to be someone who outscaled in the side lane and could be someone that the Shy can't match, but you look at the itemization, three fully completed items for the Shy. Broken Blade barely working on his second. The reality is that G2 don't really have any easy win conditions at this point. And in the fights, Weibo's just executing better. And the Shy is out damaged. Hansama in this game on this Cassante pick is most played. He's been so good at this pick. It's been so relevant, obviously, this year. And Broken Blade also, someone who can start fights off, but he's often the one who's targeted first here. Just going to be blown up before he can ult, before he can work with Caps because they're not able to group together because Weibo has so much map control. And again, at this kind of moment in a game like this where you're 7,000, 8,000 gold behind, it's hard to criticize G2's choices they can make from here because there aren't really any good ones. How much of a choice for them? We'll just have to wait and see how Weibo Gaming are going to try to put the nail in the coffin on this one. We got Baron in about a minute 15. Definitely going to be the next one to look towards. And a uh, pretty early Elder Dragon that is going to be spawning just because of the four Drakes that have been picked up in pretty quick succession here by our LPL's fourth seed. Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. Baron is what Weibo is waiting for. And you look at the minimap, and you can already see that deep vision being swept out by Mickey. But he now has to use those resources to cleanse this vision, which means that when they try to approach the river, they're not going to have those tools available. Weibo already in a great map state. The resets have now come through. Gold has been spent. And with the Baron spawning in 40 seconds, this is going to be G2's last chance to turn this game around. And it's going to have to be a big Rel ultimate, a big ultimate from Broken Blade, some type of combo here, but with no vision, no entry into this pit. I mean, you mentioned they were clearing some vision, but it's already replaced. And that was on their side of the map, not in the river, as you mentioned, not in these choke points. And Broken Blade down here, two levels behind the Shy, does finally have that Infinity Edge online, but it is just too little too late. And if you can't see, you can't fight. And that's the problem here for G2 approaching this Baron. 12 seconds to go. Weibo, they get this, and it's going to guarantee them Elder if the game goes that long. 
Well, the Infinity Edge is now finished for Broken Blade, so at the very least, he does have a second major item. Caps now completed third, level 16 for him. Mickey. They're trying to go for something here as, oh, it's just gonna be Wombo Combo. They finally found the engage, and they take down one of the most important members. That's a double kill now for G2. They find a miracle engage, and this is right when the Baron is spawning. G2, let's see what they do with this now. I mean, the Shy and Weiwei here are gonna try to contest this. G2 took a lot of damage on that engage, but they have damage to rush this Baron down right now. Let's see what Weibo do. Every single ultimate has been used from G2. They have to find a way to keep Weiwei out of the pit. They gotta keep Weiwei out. They gotta keep the Shy off of their backs. This guy is like a juggernaut right now. Can you stop this Cassante? I'm not sure that the Baron is gonna go the way of G2, but what about the ensuing fight? They get caps on the top side of this one. He's the first to go down. Bit of an engage from Mickey X. A little bit hot. Sama trying to hold his own against Light, and he will be able to hold on to it. G2 are turning this fight in their favor after they get the Baron. And Weibo, it was looking potentially good with their tanky Cassante. Not looking so good anymore. The shutdown. Just one more going into the hands of Ansama. As Weiwei still on the chase, maybe just a bit of desperation. The rest of them are getting out as Yike might have to give his life for it. But man, G2 took a huge step in the right direction. That's two kills for Xiaohu on the backside of it, though. This is the chaos we expected from this game. I told you guys it was going to be bloody. 27 kills here in 29, and they all just kind of streamed together there on that last Baron fight. And the Elder spawns in 40 seconds. The G2 members will respawn, but what an intense situation. G2 now find themselves in after being dominated through the vast majority of this game. A sliver of hope has opened, and Han Sama, what a clutch performance from him. The pick on the Shao, who is so massive, he's so much of Weibo's damage here. And because it's Kaisa that he's with, and with this lethality into Nasher's dude, the sustained damage isn't as strong with the Kaisa. So if Shao, who is down, yeah, you have this tanky frontline with the Shy, but it's not going to be enough to win you straight up fights. This fight, though, is likely going to be the one that decides the game. Weibo Gaming rushing back with the Shy, rushing back with Shao, who neither of them have teleport. They have to walk back here, trying to get Pryo 4. What will be the game deciding objective? You can tell it's G2. Everybody's here. They want to make this fight a bit different than what the soul fight looks like, of course, where they got kind of pulled apart. They overextended in some of their engaged potential. We saw there the pick on the Xiaohu. It comes down to teamwork. It comes down to five members engaging in a wombo combo scenario for G2 if they're going to get this fight in their favor. Let's see if they can do exactly that. The Shy this time on the front lines, but Yike is right there, just waiting for it. But they might just have the damage. The engage comes in. Hansama gets that ultimate off, and the Wabo comes in in such a huge way for the strategy to so many low health bars. Cap's still alive, but Light has to go 1v3 right at the end. Can he do it is the question. The knockup from Mickey is just barely enough as the ball is in the front here. Caps will be able to take him down. The triple kill for Caps as G2 win the fight. They actually managed to do it. G2 find an incredible 5v5. The Elder Dragon is up for the taking. G2 are not going down without a fight. And Weibo opted in to that fight. They cleared vision in the Elder Pit, but they decide to go in, and we're gonna go a little bit further back. Now, this was a really game-defining moment, though, because this pick was what allowed G2 to win the Baron fight and get control of the map to even have the opportunity to contest this. But blowing up Xiaohu means that you can see Light is trying to offer damage here, but it is so little. And ultimately, in this follow-up here, they just don't have the numbers they need. Caps here on the back side of this fight, and. There's no damage, there's no follow-up. Caps goes low, he is taken out here, but Hansama is just gonna rip through those health bars you give him enough time. And Light out of mana as well. This fight leads to one opportunity for G2, and you see they clear out vision in the pit, but Weiwei decides to go in trying to catch Hansama here, and the wombo combo, you pointed it out, Valdez, the follow-up oh. is fantastic. It is nasty, and this oh. is exactly what we're talking about. We talk about circles, we talk about Yone ults, it all comes together here for G2. In Europe, we call that a 3K ELO shockwave. <laughs> Spectacular from Caps. He finds so many members, a triple kill for him. Coming up absolutely clutch for the team. Fantastic from G2. You guys talked about the Wombo combo and draft. The Elder is secured. 17 to 17 is the kills. The gold is even. <laughs> what is this game? It's, it's a elder. great one. It's Elder against Mountain Soul at this moment in time. I mean, this is going to be pretty interesting to see how G2 can utilize the next minute and a half that they have with this Elder Drake. What they 
can get out of the map at this point. It's not synced up with Baron, of course, that sense fallen off a while ago. A minute 20, as you mentioned, but there's still so many turrets up here to break through. They can't threaten any inhibitors, so as long as Weibo Gaming just group together here, they will sustain some damage, but it doesn't look like G2 is going to be able to end the game off of this alone, despite getting a massive swing in gold as well. They're still just a little bit behind. You can see how crazy this game has been. I mean, it, it's been just insanity. And at this point, G2, they're trying to get as much out of this Elder Drake push as possible. Now, you, G, if you get a pick, do it. if you get a pick, I mean, you can end this game. Wave will have to respect this and give this inhibitor up. It's going to be pretty interesting to see how G2 can manage this. Still 40 seconds on the push. Weibo, are you going to go for the pick? No, they just fight Xiaohu in the front. He's just going to be taken up for free. And look at the knockup from Miki. They just get so much more in Hansama in that backline to Shy, trying to be the hero. But I don't think there's any heroes left on the side of Weibo. They do clear the wave, though. And that is going to give them a chance here. Some extra time for the Elder buff to fall off. 20 seconds left here for G2. Holy moly, they actually died the Nexus Towers to get that kill onto Xiaohu. They're looking to end the game right now. I mean, Xiaohu, he's been picked again. Here we go again. They get the knock up on the light. He's all alone. He gets taken out. That's going to be, I think, in his way, way. He's getting burned out one second on the Elder Drake buff, and they don't have quite a wave. They've got that one minion in the back as G2, they're trying to push on in, but response come out from Weibo, and Broken lady has got a shield. He's giving it a chance. Another stun comes out from Yike as Mickey doesn't get the knockup. This is just insane as the Magnus Swarm is it enough for the side of G2. They say no, they're going to back away. Xiao who's back? Xiao who he respawns. TP? He's TPing, and oh. they want to turn on to this one. Xiao who gets the Wombo, and the entire coming in meanwhile the TP. in the base they're TPing it out of this one Caps. Caps, he wants to end the game right here he wants to end it right now he wants to take the 2-0 for G2 he doesn't have a health bar though and he's gonna go down Weibo Gaming they hold on to the base oh my god my That's... heart can't take this guys this is too my insane my heart cannot take it this it was so close Oh, that's no Kassadin, that's no Xpeke, but he's almost able to pull it off. He's got the teleport in. He's so low, but he doesn't have Parents the damage. Up, parents up, and, and Weibo still have yep. three members alive. They still have those members alive. Now, Xiaohu used his teleport. Uh, I mean, this is going to be a long replay to break down, but critically here, Weibo managing to, to clear the wave after Xiaohu's death. Once again, this all starts off with Xiaohu dying, which means a lot of that damage is removed. Kaisa just doesn't have the damage through, but it's the Shy who has to really force this. But keeping the minions out here is what Bob enough time because Weibo need to buy time for the Elder to go off. They need to keep these turrets up and then get Xiaohu's respawn. At this moment in time, it's 30 seconds until he's up and they're able to pull off the defense of a lifetime here in order to pull it off. Targeting down those minions as, minions as best as they can. Look at the Shy just on the edge of the Elder buff there. It times out. They make their last stand. The stopwatches were absolutely insane. The Shy does so much great work on the back line. Oh my god, the GA being procked by Broken Blade. It's just an incredibly fine line to walk. The fact that the both teams are playing on the edge, absolutely insane. I mean, we knew this one was going to be crazy. I, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> this is like next level, man. I mean, Wave of Gaming holding on, just barely clearing the wave. So important for them. They stopped the teleport of Broken Blade as well. If he actually gets that teleport off, maybe he and Caps will have enough to burn the Nexus down. Nice deny there. He'll be able to pick up some kills on the back of it as well. Caps, he tried his best, gets it down to a third health, but that's all he can do. What an insane game. I mean, that defense from Weibo was like a tightrope. You're riding a unicycle on a tightrope. That's how dangerous it was. That's how thin the margins were. And you can see G2 getting hyped. They're so close there in the coach's, uh, coach's booth. But ultimately, Weibo Gaming back in control. That mountain soul is permanent. The Elder buff temporary. 30 seconds until another fight. I'm not going to say this one's going to decide the game because you never know. Not with a series like this or game like this. Well, the Baron, it was taken. Weibo looking to push in mid. They have a one cannon minion that is moving up there. Gerald trying to make a play in mid by himself. Meanwhile, Caps is running at the base. He says, OK, you can take Elder. I'm going to take your base, but he's going to be hit. And uh-oh, he's got the stopwatch, the Zonyas, to help him live. Yike, 
fought out on the bottom side. He's got his teammates nearby. He is so tanky on the rail. And the spoke damage so far from Weibo, not enough. Hansama trying to step forward. He gets hit, but immediately cleanses and will get out for now. Another one hits him. As he Mickey, gone. Mickey isn't able to block for him. And Hansama finally decides to use that one. Here comes the Wombo Kama. They find Wei Wei. It's in enough. And Xiao Hu goes in, but yike, he perfectly Let's go. able to get it done. He's perfectly able to keep his team safe. And G2, they're able to take the fight in a huge manner. Triple kill for Hansama. And they will win this game. Let's go, boys. Fantastic play from G2. They're going to look to end the game. What an amazing turnaround. It may be Hansama who falls early, loses GA, but he's able to buy enough time. And Broken Blade oh. finds the engage. No Inhibitor. Way. Inhibitor! No. Inhibitor! <laughs> no. It's over. D2 did it, and it's a, it's a fanfare on the stage now. People going insane in this arena after that one. What a game we just had gifted to us by G2 and Weibo. And I have to say, Vettius, I was a little worried there in the mid game. You know, I thought maybe you cursed them, but it turns no, out Vettius comes in and they win. Uh, boys, my job here is done. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Vettius. If he didn't join, I don't know if G2 could have gotten it done, but you know what? At the thinnest of margins, they pulled it off. Weren't able to kill the next.